First into the repair shop, Kim Russell from Norton in Northamptonshire. She's hoping Dominic Chenier can help a village commemorate a grave and meaningful event. So what have we got here then, Kim? Well, this board we discovered in the church. Okay. And we were doing um, an exhibition of the 100th anniversary of the start of uh, World War I in August 2014. Okay. And wandering around the church, we found this with all the names of the men that had died. And it was just in the corner, up against the wall. The nice thing about it is that not only does it give you the names of those that died, okay. but we've also got all the names of the ones that lived or survived. And I haven't seen another one that has all the names of the men of the parish that served in the war. So how did you feel when you found this, then? It was just incredible. Every village you go to has got a war memorial. Not every village has got one of these boards. No. Right. That's what makes it so special to us. Yeah. So this is quite important to the village and also oh, the parish, Oh, absolutely. Then. When we did the exhibition, People came out and they said, oh, well, I remember the Collinses. Oh, they lived so-and-so and they had so many... Oh, yeah, and the Lawrences, well, they just lived up there. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's all those memories that you can bring out in people yeah. that make this important. Yeah. Anyway, it went back in the church after the first exhibition. And this has really worn just in four years. Really? If you'd lost someone that you knew, and then to see that you couldn't even read their names, would be really sad. Yeah, it would be heartbroken. Yeah. yeah. I okay. want people in future to be able to see it and read it. Right. And so that it needs something... Just to protect it. ..for it to last another 100 years. Kim, why do you want to get this restored now, then? So this year is the 100th anniversary of the ending of the war. Right. And we've got another exhibition... That this is going to be displayed at? this is going to be oh. displayed at. OK. Quite important and urgent. And urgent, yeah, there's right. not much yeah. time. Sorry, okay. there's not a lot of time, <laughs> is there? OK. We could do it? Yeah. Yeah? We'll do our best. Excellent. Well, thank you for bringing Thanks. that That would be All wonderful. Right? No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Dom. Lovely to meet okay. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye now. Almost gone, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really, really excited that Jay and Dom are going to be able to do something to the board. It's, it's just so important. These were local boys who'd been brought up in a small village. I mean, they gave so much for us. They were so brave. And, you know, that really is the very least we could do. This board means so much to so many people. The whole village of Norton have got memories with all of these people. So it's, I feel quite a lot of pressure to do them all justice, really. I need to be very, very careful, um, and I'm a bit anxious to start working on it, to be honest. So the main issue, really, for Kim was this central section of the fallen soldiers. It's just deteriorating, really. I can see there's hints of red. This red would have been a base for a gold, gold leaf. Someone's clearly tried their best to repaint the letters with just gold paint at some point, and it's it's not really doing the original artwork justice. I'm going to try and clean that and then re-gild it. But before Dom can tackle the lettering on the board, he must first secure the structure. The first obvious thing that I need to try and tackle is these two big gaps here where the, the wooden planks have separated. There are metal strips, uh, one up each side, and I think I'm going to have to take the metal off, and there's evidence on the back of two wooden beams that are missing. I'm going to have to remake the beams on the back and, and put the metal back on and screw it back in as it should have been at the start. There are memorials like this in villages, towns and cities all over Britain to commemorate the fallen soldiers of World War I. Over 700,000 British men were killed in the Great War, and sometimes villages lost whole families of menfolk as they gave their lives fighting overseas, never to return. It's quite tempting to just go and try and force it and pull it off, but it's quite a lot of damage to the edge of this wood where the, where the screws and old bits are like, it's all cracked and stuff, so I just want to be really careful that I don't end up damaging the, the wood.
finally. Getting that out was a lot harder than I was hoping, but uh, I'm relieved, no damage to the wood. This is a made of steel and it's just gone rusty, corroded, and it's just expanded along with the wood in there and it's just glued itself in there. So I'll have to clean all of this up and make sure that won't happen again. A lot more time consuming than I'd hoped, but uh, I'm just glad it's out in one piece. While Dom wheels heavy metal and slabs of wood, the next item to arrive is rather more diminutive. Maxine Frodsham has brought along a very precious memento for the attention of toy restoration duo Amanda and Julie. Hello. Hello, Hi. welcome to the repair shop. Thank you. Who have we got here? We have Ted here. Okay. Oh, look. Oh, look. I know. Poorly Ted. Oh. So what can you tell us about him? Um, well... I'm not sure exactly how old Ted is. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I know for definite is that my stepdad, Ian, um, was given him when he was born, so 1953. Mm -hmm. Obviously very loved. Ve <laughs> very, very loved. Favourite toy all through childhood. He and my mum, they were actually childhood sweethearts oh. at high school. Oh, wow. Um, so they went their separate ways at 18. Both got divorced. And then they went to a high school reunion in 2002. Yeah. And in 2003, oh. got back together. And Ted is in the would middle have been of it. there right from the beginning of all that. Right from the very, very beginning. Very beginning. Yeah. Um, my mum remembers Ted when he had a little bit more fur. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How did... Um... This particular oh, yeah, the, yeah, the cod staining. liver oil. Cod liver oil. Yeah. So, um, in approximately <laughs> um, 1956, something like that, mm. um, Ian dropped Ted in a big bowl of cod liver oil. The story always was that my <laughs> stepnan tried washing him, scrubbing him, and in the end, she actually boiled <gasps> him. <gasps> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, don't dear. Know. Yeah. So why now? Why do you want him repaired now? Um, well, my stepdad um, passed away three weeks ago. Oh, I'm um, sorry. That's oh, recent. Good. Yeah, very recent and very sudden. He'd been life and soul of the party and he'd lost a little bit of weight. That was the first sign that anything was, was a bit strange. And on the Monday, he was seen in hospital and on the Wednesday uh, he had a full body scan and was diagnosed with uh, lung cancer, symptomless. Wow. And they gave him a few weeks. Um, and then... Sorry. Um, when we got home on the Wednesday night, uh, we were planning how he would how he was going to spend those those last few weeks in his care at home, and he passed away the next day on the Thursday. Wow, that is quick. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> the fact that I knew Ian loved Ted so much, I think it will be the biggest tribute to to Ian that we could ever have. And I think more importantly, it's, it's a way for all of us, particularly me, to make a gesture to Ian about how important he was and how special he was when I didn't have a chance to mm. tell him. Mm. We certainly can help him for you. That's brilliant. I like the sound of Ian. The fact wonderful. that he's kept his teddy all yes, his life. Absolutely. <laughs> he's been absolutely. a lovely, lovely man. He was a wonderful man. It'd be an honour to mm. do, do it for you. Thank you so much. No, you're, no, you're welcome. welcome. Thank you for bringing him. Yeah. All He'll right. be safe with us. Lovely. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> Ben. Bye. Bye. I think if Ian knew um, that Ted was was here, I can I can hear and see him laughing. Be so excited. He would be beside himself at the thought of Ted being as he was.
before we do anything, we're going to have to clean him. I think, shall we take him completely apart? Absolutely, yeah. This is all mm -hmm. dismantled. We can wash him. I'm going to start by taking his yeah. head off. Gently. It might look a bit barbaric, but it's all for the good. Look at that. He's stuffed with bits he of old is, other bear. Isn't that wonderful? They certainly didn't waste anything, no. did they? As they were making other bears in the factory, they kept all the little bits they cut off. So we're kind of getting a glimpse back in time, really. Yeah. Once Ted has had all the stuffing knocked out of him, Julie and Amanda carefully take him apart before giving him his first bath in decades. I'm just going to leave it to soak in a warm solution of very mild liquid soap flakes. We need to make sure that the fabric isn't going to fall apart when we wash it. We must keep an eye on it, just in case it starts to disintegrate. Across the workshop, Dom is starting some cleaning of his own. I'm just starting now to have an initial look at cleaning the surface of the memorial board. The fallen soldier section in the center is really fragile. So I'm using a little cotton bud just to get around and almost not clean the letters, but just clean the wood around them. Before I work over this and go anywhere near it with gold leaf, I need to remove all of this. Look how filthy it is. Just that tiny little section, just rubbing it quickly, it's absolutely filthy. This is a little glimmer here of uh, what it's going to eventually look like. Just with that little sheen, I think it's going to look really nice. Just the colours jump out so much more. Is it nice to be inside for a change? Yeah, it is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything I can help you along with? That would be great, if you don't mind getting some primer on these side pieces. Black okay. paint on those. So, you've rubbed these down? Yeah, that's the original pieces. I've just cleaned them all up. OK, them cool. Down, straighten them back up. Primer, and then what colour do you want these? Black? Black, yeah. Do you not think? Yeah, no problem. While Jay gets busy with the metal brackets, Dom can craft the missing back battens from sturdy oak. How are we doing, hey. hey. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. That cool? Cool, lovely. Thank you very much. Bye. So how are you getting on? I'm just trying to minimise the gaps, but there's only so much I can do. Where the boards have separated, these top two, they've distorted. So I think this top one's about as good as I can get it okay. before, see, before we start losing the lettering. Yeah. See there? And we've got... I'm right on the edge. So why is the board doing that now? Is that just because of the heat? It just and... wood moves. No, it hasn't been sealed and because it wasn't supported, because the board was missing the two. Actually, I've remade them. Right. So it was missing these off the back that would have held it all in. The most important thing is the letters, the it's... names that are on there. I know, I'm up against it a little bit, but I just I want to get this as good as I can. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Right. This is the best it's going to get, basically. So now I'm just going to screw these side pieces on. They'll keep it in line a bit, but they're really now a secondary support. It's these wooden beams on the back are going to hold it nice and tight. Now the actual frame's all together, it's time to finally start looking at this gold leaf on this fading central part. First step of that process is to put a gold size on, which is like a glue, basically. I'm brushing that on like paint. Wherever I put that is where the gold leaf will stick to. So I've got to be super careful now. I don't want to creep over the lines. Working line by line so the gold size won't harden too much, Dom carefully cuts the gold leaf and lays it on before gently brushing off the excess. I really feel like, at this point, I'm getting to know almost the original artist. He's obviously spent a long time doing this, and they've 
done it so nicely. There's so many nice little flicks like the ends of the R's in this typeface. And the E's have got really lovely little serifs. I just need to be very, very careful and just do the original artist justice as well as all of these men. The Armistice Day deadline may be looming, but this task can't be hurried. This is a tricky thing doing such a big piece like this. So I'm just doing it slow and steady, one line at a time. I just, I'm just going to have to take my time. There's no way I can rush this. The next visitor is hoping for a gold run of her own. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. How you doing? You all right? I'm, I'm very Jeff. well, thank you. I'm Jeff. Hi, hello. Jeff. Freya Burrell from Cumbria is gambling on the expertise of the repair shop's gaming guru, Jeff Harvey. Well, it looks not in bad nick, actually. OK, if we just gently stand her up. Lovely. Beautiful. So, tell us what we've got here, then. Yeah. Well, this is my one-armed bandit. And okay. um, I've had it ever since I was a child, really. All right. We think it came from my dad's friend, Ken, who was an engineer. He used to work on the um, pier at Western Superman. He used oh. to mend things like this. Yeah. So how old was you when you got this, then? About four. I've always been very, very hands-on, and I think Dad thought I would really appreciate it. Yeah. But I think, yeah. as a child, it was so special because nobody else had ever seen one. These were German, and um, one arm bandits are more the American or the British machines with the bigger right. handle, but these wall-mounted German ones were made in the 60s and were very beautifully engineered, and they started coming into Britain slowly in the sort of mid-60s. Yeah. And they're all mechanical, of course, so no electrics, which is lovely. What kind of coins does it take in there, then? Well, it runs off old threepenny bits, so I've okay. got a few here. OK. Where did you get the coins from? Was this from parents, grandparents? My mum's father, Grandad Jack, he used to have old tins full of bits of pieces. Right. And so I used to rummage in Grandad Jack's <laughs> tins for the coins and, oh, lovely. you know, ask them all if they ever came across any threepenny bits to find them. And yeah. they still do that today. You oh, know, really? My, my family yeah. still know to go to car boot sales and things and collect coins for me. Brilliant. So what's exactly wrong with this, then? Well, the money gets stuck on the way down, then the handle's really very, very stiff, okay. and so it takes a lot of effort to pull it down. And then I don't think the reels line up anymore, so you're unable to get three cherries or three bells. What's going to happen with this? If we're able to restore it, um, who is it going to go to, or is it going to stay in the family? Are you going to play it? What are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to play it. Okay. It's going to be quite hard to pass it on, but mm. my nephew, Elwood, he's nine, mm. and he's showing a real aptitude for mechanics and oh, things. Really? Yeah. yeah. So I think he's the right chap for it, and he can show it off to all his friends, and then I can be the auntie that collects the thread. <laughs> <to laughs> that would be nice, yeah. 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 Full, full circle, as it were. Delightful. Absolutely yeah. delightful. Thank you for bringing this in. Um, I'm sure Jeff's going to work his magic on it. I will do my very best. Well, thank you both very much. Take yeah. care now. Bye-bye. 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 It's been with me for my entire life. It's going to be a bit weird leaving it behind, um, but then I've got full faith in Jeff. I'm sure he'll do a cracking job on it and I'll get it back in full working order. Have you worked on one of these before? I took one apart 30 years ago and I've never put it back together, so <laughs> <laughs> this might be educational for me, actually, yeah. But we'll, we'll work it up, yeah. Oh, I like right. a challenge. Well, let's get this to your bench, yeah. <laughs> Great. Lovely. Let's see what's wrong with this fellow. Maybe try a coin. Never know. In goes a threepenny piece. Absolutely zilch. So let's have a look. Uh, there's some German instructions here warning me not to do something. Sadly, I'm not bilingual, so I don't know what it is, but I'll try not to do it. The coin should roll down here where it's got stuck. Um, the machine isn't detecting anything, so there's a little... I'm going to cheat a bit using my finger. If I put my finger there, hopefully it isn't one of the warning things. Uh, oh, that's very stiff. It shouldn't be stiff like that at all. Something is awry, so we'll have to work out what's happening there. And I hope my German improves as well. Across the workshop, Ted has had his bath and is now bare-coloured, if not yet bare-shaped. 
dropped head is all nice and clean now. We've managed to remove all that greasy, oily cod liver oil. And it's actually really sweet because you can see it's got little bits of fur. The next job is to strengthen Ted's threadbare and fragile 65-year-old coat. What we're doing is lining every single piece and the felt enables us to stitch into the vintage fabric without causing it more damage. It's got to be done, otherwise he'll fall apart. I'm going to get on and do some darning now into this felt, make like a weave with our thread. So we'll overstitch one way and then we'll weave in and out, in and out, until we've completely covered that hole. I like using darning on these old bears. It seems to be in keeping with their age. I feel like a pioneer making a quilt or something like Ooh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's completely lined now. We can stuff him nice and firm. I'm going to start on his head. Already you can see now he's got a straight nose because his nose was folded onto the side of his face. So already his little face is starting to come back. He's got a profile. Look at that. Here we are, trying to give them a glimpse of what Ian knew. Yes, and why he fell in love with him. Yeah. I am going to put new joints into Ted. Some of them were a bit damaged over the years, so we've decided to give him nice new ones. And to go inside the body here, like so. All his limbs are in place now, and his body's stuffed. So there you go, girl. Thank you very much. Welcome. She can go and have a cup of tea. I'll pop the head on. Part of the skill of any renovation is knowing how to blend the new elements with the antique in order to preserve character. So I'm just going to use a little bit of beeswax on his nose. This would take down that blackness so that it looks a bit older, so he doesn't look like he's got a really bright, shiny new nose. There's a lot of memories and emotions tied up in this little bear. I am looking forward to seeing Maxine's face when, when she gets him back and knowing that he's going to have a special place somewhere prominent within the family home. Dom is also contemplating the future of his assignment as he painstakingly restores the names on the memorial board in time for the Armistice Day ceremony. It's been quite a long journey, this. I've just got the last couple of names now that I'm just burnishing off. This is where you can really tell if I've applied the size accurately. I was really concerned about putting so much gold leaf on. I didn't want the gold to jump out and look like I've just put a brand new bit of gold on. But where the original letters started flaking off, I haven't re-gilded that area. I think that just helps to settle the brand new gold into the obviously old and worn board. But I'm really, really pleased with how it's sitting on the board as a whole, mixed with all the other colors and this lovely reef. I think it's really looking great. You can read all of the names now of the fallen soldiers, and I just I hope we're, we're doing them justice. We gather around this memorial today to remember all those from this community who died their country in the time of war. We're a very small village, so although we only lost 16 men, that was a high percentage of the young men in the village. And those men would have been missed. We've been in contact with a lot of the families of the people on the board. And then to see it deteriorate so badly, we felt as if we were not only letting the men down, but we were also letting their relatives down. 
I'd like to thank all of you for coming today. And we're now going to ask David if he'll pull back the curtain and show you the restored board. Great Uncle John was killed at Eeps on the 24th of October 1914. These are his brothers, that's Great Uncle Fred, and that is my grandfather, William Blanco, who was in the Royal Horse Artillery. That is my granddad, Wadham Yates, and um, he lived all his life in the village. I'm the nephew of Frank and Albert Manning, and the son of John Manning, who survived the war. It is very moving to come over here and see the names and to realise the sacrifice that, that people made. To John Litchfield on the board there, and his great, great, great grandson. So, um, yeah, it's quite honouring to see him on the board there. John Litchfield was my great uncle, and his grave was never found. I've been to where he died, seen what was probably the field, and to come and end here is, um, is, you know, it's been a great trail of discovery, really. Back at the repair shop, Jeff is slowly getting to grips with a vintage fruit machine. My first thing is to give these little coin slides a bit of a clean so that the coin will run through nice and neatly. Um, looking at this mechanism, which I've taken off the side just now, the coin runs through here and the machine detects when the coin is in there by this little tongue. And that will enable the handle to work then the handle cranks up and literally winds up the fruit machine mechanism. And then it's slowed down by a clockwork mechanism. It's quite an amazing little process, actually. It really is. It's lovely to see how it works. And I'm thoroughly enjoying myself so far. So long may it continue. Let's see. Fingers crossed, let's put a coin in and see what happens. Hurrah! Good show. I'm very easily excited. I must remember to go out more. Having figured out how the machine works, Jeff now has to figure out how to fix it. And when it comes to defective clockwork, there's only one man to call. Steve, do you have a moment? I wondered if I could um, ask your learned detentions. Um, this is a German style fruit machine. Right, OK. But it is, at the moment, uh, you could... I'll show you what happens. It's quite clever, actually, because you do this, where you do it with a handle. That spins the reels. This clockwork mechanism Ooh. does the timing. I thought I just said the word clockwork, you get interested. Yeah, yeah. But at the moment, I could actually pull the handle, get a copy of War and Peace, read most of it before anything else happens. So um, we need to make it a little bit quicker, if we can. That does take a long time. The first hour is the worst, but you get yeah. quite into it so, after so you that. So yeah. you want me to make time fly? Yes, if you could, actually. Right. Very nice. You're the man who controls time and space. Yeah. So I wondered if this probably has never been looked at since it was installed, to be honest. Are you able to take that off yes, and am. give it to me as a, a clock mechanism? Yes, I will. And then I'll bring it back to you. And I'll put it back in. Speed it up. Much appreciated. Thank you. What a gent, hey? Right, this is the regulator. It's supposed to be closed in when it's, it's running at the, uh, the correct speed. And if it goes too fast, they should open up. 
and hit the side of the cylinder. And that's what regulates it. That one's just completely gummed up. And it's just, instead of smoothly rubbing on the outside of that cylinder, what it's doing is it's sticking to it. So if I clean it up, maybe it's going to run fast. Jeff has now cleaned and reassembled the rest of the machine, but it's still not working properly. I've got the mech to work, the actual spinning reels and all that, and the coin mech to work, but when I put them together, there's something really odd going on because the handle won't go quite far enough, and yet does perfectly when the mech's out. The mech's not jamming anywhere, so I've not a clue what it is. Hang on a sec. I've just seen something. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa, that works. <laughs> I must take my fingers off, yeah. Uh, that, that is a problem. I can't believe that. That's amazing. That is, I know what that is. That is a bit of metal that was probably put in when they changed the currency over from German to British coins. And look, there are lots of bits lying around like this, and it must have fallen off. That's what it is. I was racking my brains. I almost had a sleepless night. I was worrying about it over breakfast, over my eggs on toast. That shows how bad it was. Um, that's a great relief. So when I get the clock mechanism off Steve and we put that on the mechanism, I have a feeling we might even be able to get a game out of it and I'll be able to win thousands of threat me bits and live the life of Riley. Right, it's all done. Good God. So yeah. I've cleaned it through. It was absolutely full of gunge and, and dirt and everything. And oh, it seems to be going really quite fast. Oh, that's brilliant, yeah, because before it was like slow motion. Much right. appreciated. Thank you very much, Steve. So I've just tightened this little arm up, put its two little clips on. I'm just going to do it by hand, just to see if we're vaguely on. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's lovely. That's much better. Right, now what I need to do is pick up this mechanism and get it into position, which is probably easier said than done. Let's have a look. Will you go in? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Fingers crossed. Pull the handle. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Gorgeous. It works. Hurrah. I think a little few adjustments here and there, but I'm very pleased with that. Over on the toy restoration bench, Amanda and Julie are nearing the end of their mission, preparing to give Ted's face some much-missed features. This bit always looks a bit gruesome, doesn't mm, it? It does. But already I can see his little yeah. face coming to life. Got him. Hello. Oh, he's got such a kind little face. Yes. Look at him. So in honour of Ian's very favourite football team... Yes. Derby County Derby Colours. County, absolutely. Returning to the repair shop to be reunited with her late stepfather, Ian's beloved Teddy, Maxine. With her are two people also intent on honouring him. Today I've brought my mum, Dawn, and my stepsister, Suzanne. Ted was very important to Ian, always looked after, always in a place of reverence. It's like part of Ian. This once oil-stained, earless and sightless bear was Ian's favourite toy from childhood. Now, with a new lease of life, he stands to be a priceless link to Ian's memory. How are you feeling? I'm actually a bit nervous. I think they're going to be blown away. We'll go with that. Confidence. Welcome to the repair shop. Lovely Welcome. to see you. It's lovely Thank to see you. Lovely to see you. Suzanne. Hi. So you're Ian's daughter. daughter yes. And wife. Wife. We're, we are so, sorry for your loss. Oh, we know it is you. very recent. It is, yes. Um, thank you. We obviously spoke to Maxine on her own when she brought Ted in. Yes. It'd be interesting to know, before you see him now, what your memories 
of him were. I've never really known Ted look anything other than gruesome. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them waiting long yeah. enough. Would you like to see him? Oh, yes. Are yes. we ready? Oh, oh, oh. oh look. You've already done it. <laughs> That's the cutest face. Oh, goodness. Oh. He's got a face. Yeah. I said I wasn't going to um, <laughs> get emotional about it, but. He's a bear. Oh, I have a hold of him. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Should we have a group hug, I think? Because I think I'm needing <laughs> it as well. You've got me. Come on, group hug, girls. Oh, oh thank yeah. you. No, you're not. Thank welcome. you. We were so... so worried. It was such a responsibility. Oh, oh, and we so no. wanted to get it right for you. He's perfect. He's good to go now. Yeah. He's oh, absolutely really? brilliant. I can, I can see Ian's face now. It just, it'd just be, it'd just be absolutely over the moon. Yes, he would be. I'm He's delighted. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Absolutely welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. And Thank you for bringing him. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Come on, Ted. I'm absolutely over the moon. It's like Ian's still around. Things have been very difficult lately and very emotional. We're still all reeling from the shock of losing Ian. But this means so much to us because it was such a treasured possession of his. And every time we look at him, We'll always think about Ian. Arcade game expert Jeff is preparing to return the vintage German fruit machine. Having repaired the insides, he's now giving the case a few final touches. I'm actually being quite gentle. It might not look it. We won't get it new, but we'll get it at least looking better than it did. It's a nice little bit of trim. The actual design of this is actually very cute. Slightly Art Deco-ish. Lovely. Returning to the repair shop is Freya, this time with nine-year-old nephew Elwood, who will be the new owner of the restored fruit machine. I just think if it can run again and we can play it again and children at Elwood's age can carry on using it, it's a fantastic thing for Elwood to have and keep his interest going. I think he's really nice to give it to me. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Freya. Hello there. Hello. Hello, I'm Jeff. How are you? This is Elwood, my nephew. How lovely to meet you. Very nice to see you. I'm very excited about this. Are you excited? It's been, it's been a lovely thing to work on mm -hmm. as well. I much enjoyed it. But, Adam, did be so kind to give me a hand removing this. Do you want to take that bit there? Thank you very much. Wow. There we go. It's looking better already. Would you like to put a coin in and see if it works? Yeah. Lovely. It's quite high up. Can you reach up there? Then you have to pull that handle really hard. Hooray! That's so smooth. Hooray! Thank you very much. <laughs> And you won. Oh, you won. Fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. How clever is that? Brilliant. It was so hard to pull that handle before. 
Oh, you I did know. better than me. I oh. didn't win anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I show you a couple of little things I did, if I may? Yeah. If I just move it round, a few new bolts and bits and shiny pieces. New screws. Shiny new oh, springs. Shiny new springs. And do you want to see how it works? If I pull the handle. And a little clug for the payout. If there was a power, isn't that clever stuff? It's beautiful. It was a little fiddly, but I've learned so much, and it's yeah. a great thing, and I think it will last a very long time. And I'm very pleased it's going to you. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. It's a great thing to have. Yeah. It just works so much better than I've ever seen it work. Now it's working so perfectly well that Elwood's going to have no trouble at all keeping it working and he can show it off to his friends as well now.